G'day everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how we measure the energy from a fire. Now, for a long time, temperature has been the go-to metric when we're talking about measuring heat. But temperature has its limits when we're talking about measuring the energy from a fire. Take this room fire for example. A post flashover compartment will typically reach temperatures between 800 and 1100 degrees Celsius. But when we have a look at a much smaller flame in a candle, the candle's flame can range from around 800 degrees to 1400 degrees Celsius, depending on how and where you take the measurement. And this is where temperature starts to become limited for its ability to accurately account for the energy being released by the fire. Because as we see here, if we add another candle to the fire, the flame will increase in size. However, the temperature does not increase in a similar way. So while we've undoubtedly created a larger fire and we are releasing more energy, we're not seeing that energy released as a function of temperature. And this limitation can be extended to wildfires, where the majority of the flames will be burning within an 800 to 1200 degree temperature range. Now, flames can reach higher temperatures given different fuel sources and abundance of oxygen or premixed flames. And we also know that even within a flame, the temperature can vary greatly depending on where you take the measurement from. But it is generally accepted that most flames will be burning within an approximate 800 to 1400 degree temperature range. And the important thing is, is this temperature range is regardless of how large or small the fire is. And this means that there is a large amount of energy being emitted by the fire that isn't being accounted for by temperature. So we need to account for that energy in a different way. And this is where the concept of heat comes in, or the heat release rate. Now the heat release rate is a measurement of all of that energy that is being released by the fire. And therefore, the heat release rate is accounting for all of the energy that temperature does not account for. So if you take these fuel sources, for example, they will all burn with a similar flame temperature, but the candle will release around 80 watts of energy, the rubbish bin will release around 30 kilowatts of energy, the sofa will release around 2.5 megawatts of energy, and a room that has gone through flashover will release in excess of five megawatts of energy. So this just demonstrates that rather than looking at the maximum temperature that the fire reaches, if we actually look at the overall energy that is released by that fire, we gain a much better picture of how large the fire actually is. And by doing this, we can gain a better understanding of how that fire is going to behave and evolve over a given period of time. Okay, so now we've seen that temperature is a very useful measurement, but it is just a measurement of the total kinetic energy of a single point within the fire. Whereas the heat release rate accounts for all of the energy that is being released by that fire. And by using the two together, we can much better describe the conditions within a fire and therefore have a better understanding of what that fire is doing and what it's going to do as time goes by. But that's it for this one. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.